Alright, so you're wandering through the internet. Entertainment levels are low. You both are about to die of boredom. What do you want to do? I look for a cool new podcast! Yeah, and I assist. Alright, give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, and roll with advantage. Bond's Journal, page 87. The last few days have been spent remodeling our new airship to our liking as we travel to Yartar to resupply. We dropped off the frost giant outside of town so as not to panic the townsfolk, then headed into town. When we docked, we heard of the Golden Goose, a casino ship ran by Lord Dryland. Kinian, Eifer, Keo, and I all headed for the ship eager to see what all the hullabaloo was about. So we all got on the ship one way or another. It's apparently really hard to get on this stupid thing. And we were talking to the Lord guy when all of a sudden, Eifer just disappeared. I chased after him immediately, even though I had no idea where he went. I'm not about to lose Eifer again. Manette and Tin, you guys have been uh, just tinkering around on the boat, uh, or whatever whatever you guys would be. The crew has taken this time as shore leave, and they have head, uh, headed off the ship. So you guys are on the ship, and uh, what you know is that everybody left for the casino. Uh, the casino is called the Golden Goose, and it is on the ship called the Grand Dame. Is it a flying ship? It is not a flying okay. ship. The harbor master has has kind of been just standing around the boat, just kind of, you know, uh, yakking it up with uh, with some of the cruisemen, and uh, he's kind of one of those people that doesn't leave you guys alone. Uh, so he's just kind of over your shoulder talking and stuff, and uh, and he's been talking about um, how they go out on the scenic like cruise type thing while you're uh, gambling, and they do a a big pass around the river and they follow down each side of the city and then back up to where you can see the city off into the distance with the lights and everything. He said it's an absolutely wonderful uh, uh, trip. Tin, you're on, on the top deck and you see over down the river just a little bit. Uh, you see down the river a ways. Uh, you see a bright angelic figure rise up into the sky and uh and it is starting to circle and then you see uh then you see him disappear like from where he's at he doesn't move or anything it just you see it and then it disappears uh it looks a lot like bond okay yeah yes you start to hear shouts coming from down river uh it sounds like a lot of people uh like gasping and uh like not they're they're just shouting in terror basically and then you see where the dock connects up to the road Mm -hmm. um uh on the side there uh there is a troop of foot soldiers just like running down towards uh towards that dock where the where the grand dame is uh is docked or moored so what do you want to do is the ship something where I can like lean down and shout to Manette at a lower level, or? Uh, yeah, you could shout and and he'll hear. There's that uh, cargo thing near the uh, nose of the ship where when they un- undo the uh, the top lattice, you can drop a bunch of cargo down, and that actually goes directly down into a shop. Oh, okay. Yep. Hey, so, Manette. I think something's going on. We should we should check out what's happening. You hear some clanging. <laughs> Still shout. working on on the, the the new engine piping, whatever. Nice. Then it stops. Just a minute. In like ten minutes, not no. not quite a minute. <laughs> it's, okay. it's more like uh, fifty nine seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's very punctual. Yeah, very nice. All right, cool. So you guys start heading off that way. Yeah. So, cutscene. 
I find it appropriate that our engineer is wearing a red shirt this evening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Not expendable, though. <laughs> uh, cut scene over to Kinian. So, Kinian, you're standing in uh, the dressing room for the attendants and stuff like that. Uh, you've just been given the fake title of head of security, and how walks off away from you. Uh, and when when Pau does, your uh, buddy Zentarum says, you better watch out for her. She uh, She's the real head of security. And uh, she's quite a powerful wizard. Wizards. And, and he spits on the deck uh, after you say wizards. I, I sneer at myself briefly in the mirror and then look back at him. Yeah, with combed hair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, and he says, "You'll do right fine. Uh, just go out there and be intimidating. Uh, don't say anything to people, but just look like you're about to. You'll do right fine. You'll get paid fifty gold uh, for just holding this position. Uh, and I assume Pal wants you to report anything that you see as suspicious. Uh, so, yeah." You might want to talk with her if, if you're up there walking around and you don't really know what to do. Uh, she she walks around and she exchanges all the money, uh, giving out our our golden tokens for uh, actual uh, gold and platinum. And uh, yeah, you should you should check it out. Actually, it's kind of cool. She's got this like this this sack and uh, it. It like holds everything. It can fit anything inside. Like you see her and she's like digging like elbow deep in this sack. There's no way that it's as deep as up to her elbow. And then she pulls out like pounds of of uh, of gold when she's paying out at the night, end of the night. It's uh, it's a sight to be seen. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he said you'll get your payment from from the captain and. Uh, You'll want to uh, you'll want to be very respectable of the owner here. Uh, his name is Casper Dryland, but he likes to be called Lord Dryland. In my opinion, this guy does not dress like a lord, but he likes to schmooze up the people who uh, who run this city. And I guess that makes him more powerful. Friends in power makes you powerful, I guess. So uh, I gotta go. Uh, I'm watching table six, and uh, and he like scampers off, and uh, uh, heads up to the to the main deck. And leaves me ar- alone. Yep. <clears throat> what do I see around me? Uh, you see some lockers, uh, like wooden lockers with uh, uh, just a bunch of junk. Uh, some are open and like clothes are hanging out, like someone was getting dressed in a hurry. You don't see anything outside of that. Did they stow my gear in one of these lockers? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, if you recall, your uh, your axe is illusioned. It doesn't look like it's there. So, okay. when your your friend scampers off, you hear all this shouting. These rich men saying, "Security! Security!" You hear uh, shouts from from people out on the docks. How'd I go? So, uh, so you make your way up to the main deck, and the tables, there's, there's a bunch of different tables, uh, card tables, uh, craps tables, just all sorts of different games that are uh, here. And um, everybody's looking dockside. There's a bunch of people out near the railing, like, looking up into the sky. I first scan the room to make sure, like, no funny business is taking place. Mm-hmm. Um, but playing off my role, I push myself through, basically. Okay. And announce myself to the group and say, Head of security here, what is the meaning of this? And uh, one of the ladies uh, next to the rail says, Look! And she points up into the sky, and you see this angelic form. It's Bon in his angel form. Uh, flying around in a circle. He looks like he's looking for something. And then you you uh, hear something off to your left, uh, like 
some words, and then he disappears. He doesn't dive or anything like that, just disappears. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to be concerned about. We're perfectly safe. Uh, I ask that, um, you know, safely, you know, return to your tables. Um, we'll have a round of drinks come around. Everybody just enjoy the evening. People are acknowledging that. And then you hear this like round of applause come through, like sweeping across the deck and all the people that are on the rail and you see uh, Pow out. Uh, she has walked out onto the, the deck by the captain and is bowing and is uh, is raising her hands out. Uh, and she does like this small firework show out of her hands. And she says, uh, and that is but the least of what you should expect tonight. Tonight shall be a fantastic night. She goes back onto the deck and she walks by you and she says, what the hell is going on tonight? This is ridiculous. And she brushes off her robes and she stomps upstairs into to the second floor of the ship. Cutscene over to Keo. <laughs> uh, so Keo, mm -hmm. uh, Bon and Eifer have just abandoned you. Lord Dry Dryland. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew his name yet. Can't remember I don't now. Think I do. Okay. Well. I still think I'm auditioning. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so Lord Dryland, or the man you'll find out to be that, uh, mm -hmm. he looks at you and he acknowledges you as Keo, and he he informed you as that he knows who you are. If you remember, that's where we left off. So he says, uh, now Keo. Now that two of your friends have left, tell me your business here. I'm the entertainment, right? I got the job, right? I start playing tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> I perform at a... At a 13. At a 13? <laughs> Slightly above average. Yeah, yeah, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. Uh, he goes, cut the crap, Keo. I know who you are. What are you doing on my ship? Well, you see, there was a big crowd, and I was just following people. Did Epito send you? No. Mm -hmm. He wants me to commit suicide. Oh. Uh, he has this idea that I can take on cloud giants. Cloud giants. We need to start with the small giants, move to the big giants. So I mean, they're all really big giants. You're almost, you're almost a giant. He says, uh, oh. So cloud giants is what you seek. Well, no, I don't see cloud giants. Then what? What are you doing here? I heard you needed entertainment. Perhaps we can fit something in. Do you know where those two went? I point out the window. Their destination, not their direction. Only Ifer knows where Ifer goes. But um, I bet Bond's looking for him because I figure if he knows my name, he knows their names. At that moment, uh, Pow walks through the door, and she shuts it. She starts talking with Lord Dryland uh, as if you're not even here. And uh, and she says, uh, it is going to be an interesting... What's that? I start rummaging through stuff. <laughs> uh, she says, uh, it's going to be an interesting night. We've already had uh, one of those angels roaming around. What's going on down here? Or over here? And uh, and he says, says well, uh, one disappeared uh, and then one flew out the window. That's pretty much it. And then uh, my friend here, Keo, uh, I think is what his name is. Is that your name, fella? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, well, I think we're going to have Keo for, uh, for tonight's entertainment. And uh, and she kind of side eyes you and is like, um, goes, oh, entertainment, okay. Um, well, Keo, I hope you perform much better than our earlier encounter. And she says, well, I need to get to exchange it. People can't play without their tokens. And she walks out of the uh, door. Uh, she shuts it and then she opens it back up and pops her head in. And she says, uh, come with me, Keo. I will show you where your your stage is. You better hope that you can follow something up 
uh, as great as what your friends have uh, concocted. Uh, she opens the door enough for you to scan go through. Like, okay. Okay. Uh, she leads you down to the main deck, and she brings you up to Kinian. And she okay. says, uh, now, Keo, this is my head of security, Kinian. I've known him for years. He's a good man, and uh, he'll take care of you. He'll basically be your shadow for when you're, when you're not uh, performing. And when you are performing, he will be close by. So do mind him when you're doing your tricks. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, you've got pretty much the run of the floor. And she shows you uh, the main deck is set up so that there is all these different tables for gambling and stuff like that. And then there's like this dance floor that's out towards the no nose of the ship. And that's what uh, she tells you is your stage. And this dance floor is uh, set up perfectly, so most of the tables, especially the high roller, um, well, the more expensive section, uh, can see the floor fantastically. Uh, she says, now if you put on a good show, we'll pay you 50 gold pieces for tonight. All right. All right. So uh, she goes, whatever you need to do, uh, go ahead and prep it. Uh, everybody thinks that the show starts in about 10 minutes. Um, I say, nice to meet you, young master, with my voice sort of cracking. Mm -hmm. And you can't help but notice the kind of like the flop sweats that you've never seen before mm -hmm. on Kinian. That's, uh... Notice Kyo recognized Kinian. Yeah, it, given it's, how... it's Kinian with a comb. Like, yeah. just, <laughs> his hair is tidy. He whispers, Kinian, you look awful. <laughs> She, Paolo says, that's not nice, Keo. Ginian's a good man. He'll protect you. Yeah. And she leaves. Yeah. I'll keep you safe. <laughs> she is off into the crowd and uh, cut scene over to <laughs> Manette and Tin. And I need to get you guys, like, all together. <laughs> they can come watch my show. <laughs> I have all sorts of ideas for... So, to do with my magic spells. Tin and Manette, uh, what are you bringing towards the ship? Your your standard gear? Yeah. Okay. When you get to uh, the Grand Dame's dock, it is a long dock that uh, looks like it makes an F that is reflected backwards, right? So it's an F pointing the wrong way. There's two, there's two uh, ports or whatever that can go into this ship. And uh, there's a long line with a velvet rope going down. Uh, there is a lot of rich people in this line. Uh, very well-to-do people. And towards the nose of the, of the ship is where the, um, the workers go in. Okay. Uh, you, see, you see people uh, now trawling food um, or food supplies uh, up to the spot and uh, and some of the crew is there inspecting these trolleys uh, before they come on. Uh, the captain of the ship is um, is greeting each person, uh, and you see somebody who's pretty well to do try to get onto the ship, and the uh, the captain says uh, says, "Hey, you, uh, uh, not on my ship. Get going, Pori." And the guy looks absolutely flabbergasted. He's like, "Uh, uh." I told you, get off my ship. And a guy like kind of hangs his head a little bit and he, he starts walking. He walks uh, down past you guys and son of a bitch, you're pouring that shit in both crap and shit. And, and he's just continuing off. What about the screams that I had heard? Am I seeing anything where people are looking distressed? Uh, not anymore. Actually, you're hearing, uh, you're hearing people uh, talk about the the fantastic display that just happened and how they're super excited for the show. Uh, word is getting around that there's a uh, that they have a small dragon that is uh, going to be uh, performing for everybody. Uh, some people are calling him a pygmy dragon. Uh, other people are throwing around the word cobalt, but a lot of people are uh, kind of sensitive around that word. I guess. My first 
thought would be to go to that, um, like the guard person where and the, the workers go in. Yeah, where the workers go in and just okay. like, you know, hey, I thought I heard some shouting around here. Is there anything weird going on right now? The guy who's guarding the worker entrance is like, "Aye, that you did. Uh, well, we had quite the fantastic display. Our resident wizard pal gave us." Uh, a little bit of a, a taste of what we should expect tonight. She she put up this image up into the sky of this this angel flying around. It was absolutely fantastic. And then you should have seen it. She shot off these fireworks like pew, 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 pew. it was sweet. So that makes me a little concerned, but I'm not going to really show it. Okay. Um, because I'm wondering. You know, it looked to me it looked like. Bond maybe that I had seen up there. So I'm going to ask if there's any way for me to meet the sorcerer. He says, well, I can try. I can't guarantee you that she'll come. Uh, she's pretty important. Um, are you looking for work or? Well, some of my friends came over here, some of my companions, and it sounds like they might be with her. I, I don't really want to say that um, the angel in the sky was someone I know. Sure. But. He says, well, if your friends are on here, uh, you you could probably get on. I mean, I mean, I don't know. The captain's a little stingy, and he kind of looks you both up and down. He's like, I don't know. Do you have any advice for what we could say to the captain to try to get on board? Uh... Well, if you're looking to gamble, he he might let you on if you give him like ten gold pieces each. Uh, you slip it to him. Uh, I see it every once in a while. Somebody walks up and uh, reaches out for a handshake. People think they're sly, but old Swifty catches them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so you're not looking for work then? Do you still need me to get pal? What kind of work is there available? Well, uh, we've got servers. Uh, uh, we need people to to uh, man the tables. Um, uh, that's a little harder to get into. They need to go through a full vetting process and stuff like that. We've got people that need to row the boat. It, we've got especially high turnover on that. Um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, that's that's pretty much it. We really need servers. We really need. Boat rower, rowers and uh, tables, that's going to be tough. Is there anything that's, that looks especially heavy around? Um, there's a there's a cart right behind you, like, full of food. And, and like, the, the lady that's uh, holding it is actually nudging it into the back of your heels and is like, Come on, come on! It's refrigerated stuff! Come on! This stuff needs to stay cold! Rude. I pick up the cart... You just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's like, whoa, 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 be careful, be careful. <laughs> and the guy's like, so, uh, so you row in or what? <laughs> uh, maybe something more along the lines of security? Well, if... I can I'm... try and get pow for that. Um, we don't usually take people that walk onto the ship uh, for that, um, but... Uh, I'll send word for it. And he, he whistles and uh, and tells the guy uh, walking by, he says, Go get Pow! Uh, this guy right here, you see him? He's lifting the, the thing. It's freaking awesome. He wants a security job. <laughs> and the guy's like, Oh, crap! And he, like, runs off. Go get her. A little bit of time goes by. <laughs> a little bit of time goes by, and Pow shows up, and uh, she says, Uh... What can I do for you? I'm looking for some work. I hear uh, security work. Yep, I'm uh, I'm stronger than I look, so I'm uh, I'm not very noticeable, which means I can catch some of the people who are trying to avoid the security people a bit more. She uh, kind of a sly security. She she gives you a like a once over, and she's like, ah. I like that belt of yours. Yes. Well, are you a trustworthy person? And, uh, 
she tries to gauge who you are based on uh, and uh, she she thinks she gets a pretty fair assessment. So, are you trustworthy? My friends seem to think so. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let me tell you what. I need a pit boss. I need somebody that's gonna manage a couple of tables. You might have to exchange a little bit of money. Remember that all money that comes in has to come through me. So if someone needs to exchange, I have to come over, trade in uh, coins for tokens. I'll assign you to tables one through six. Uh, uh, they're fantastic tables. Um, keep your eyes sharp. Uh, if any losses happen on the boat, they come out of your pay. 50 gold pieces for the night. Generous and, wage. Well, the house always wins. So she shows you over to your pit. Uh, she introduces you to all six of the table attendants and uh, informs you that they swap out every couple hours. And uh, she, uh, she takes you off to the side and she says, now you really need to watch the table attendants. The people at the table, it's pretty clear when they're cheating. Just watch for cards and stuff like that. But you need to watch the table attendants. If they, if they slip any, uh, any tokens or anything like that. We try to count them, but it happens every once in a while. And she lets you uh, be, she says, uh, one through six, by the way, is right next to the stage. It's it's right up front and- it's the high uh, roller tables. What's that? Yeah. It's the high roller tables. Yep, yep. And she says, uh, the people here are spending lots of money, uh, especially for your, your pit. Uh, please be courteous. These are people that uh, our owner, Lord Drylan, uh, uh, personally uh, respects and uh, enjoys their presence. And we want to make sure that we are extending that same, uh, that same, same feeling. Uh, hospitality is key. And uh, she says, well, I've got more things to do. As I've explained, I, I exchange all the gold and uh, this is my busy time. So uh, I really thank you for your help, uh, seeing how we're a person down tonight, and uh, uh, thanks again. And she she like walks off with purpose. For um, the record, my thunder cane is away in my bag of holding, and I've got my wrench. Perfect. On me. Okay, just like tucked <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Okay. You know, we're in respectable company. I don't want to be carrying around a gun, and scaring everybody. Not mount based. Oh, what time are we in? In the Yartar? Yartar. Well, Yartar is an open carry state, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> not on this boat. This is it's not on this boat. Open carry it's boat. the Wild West of Faerun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not on this boat. So, All right, so, Tim, do you jump in line? So, yeah, I give the, the guy that we were talking to, I give him a piece of gold for the helpful information. And uh, Swifty says, uh, hi, thank you, miss. And yeah, I'm going to get in line because... Okay. You walk, you actually walk right by the captain. Okay. Uh, when you go towards the line, uh, you're walking right by the captain. And uh, next to him is, it seems like his first mate. Uh, he kind of is, uh, he's uh, making low verbal notes <laughs> to this person. Uh, for people to keep an eye on and stuff like that. So I wait in line. Okay. And is See, it a long line or? It's a pretty long line. They start sifting through them pretty quick though, as uh, it is near dusk and they want to be on the river uh, pretty soon here. So uh, the captain is like, you, 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 out. And, and it just, it starts cutting the line down more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it gets up to you and you start you start walking on it. And he goes, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't let you on the ship looking like this. He says, I need to relieve you of your weapons. What are you doing here anyways? You don't look like the sort here. I'm here to gamble. And, uh, and he eyes your purse and it's just like, this big mass of coins like hanging off your hip because you guys haven't traded any of the coins in yet. Uh, he says, uh, well, 
I have to take your weapons. We'll check them, and there is a uh, just a small storeroom. Somebody tends it all night. Uh, when you get off the ship, you'll get your weapons back. Just give them the ticket back. Um, uh, also, your armor, probably got to go. Uh, you can't be walking around, stomping around in, in the armor you've got. Um, do you got any anything other than underclothes? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, he says... He says, um, well, you're welcome aboard. Uh, just, uh, enjoy your time. Uh, word, word is that we've got a pygmy dragon for tonight's, uh, entertainment. Uh, it should be pretty good. Yeah. Oh, is that coming up soon? It, it is, uh, he, he looks towards the sky and he's like, it should be any time now. And, uh, he says... You won't want to miss that. I saw a little bit of a preview earlier. Pretty cool. And uh, he uh, points you towards the check room, Mm -hmm. and uh, the tenant is uh, very courteous, uh, helps you uh, take your armor off and get Mm -hmm. get prepared uh, with fresh clothes, not sweaty clothes, basically. Uh, Whatever you want to wear. And then uh, hands you this little paper ticket with a uh, yellow goose uh, stamped on it, and it's got the number, like, 16. Mm-hmm. Well, I thank the attendant and very seriously tell him, because I don't like giving up my weapons. So I, I just hand him a few pieces of gold and tell him that I really appreciate the the care that he's going to give all of my items. and he, Kind of a stern look, but a very nice tone. He, uh, he says, uh, this is a, a sh- a shorter, on the shorter end, dwarf. And uh, he says, I miss, I uh, I can appreciate your gear. And uh, I will make sure that no no harm comes to it. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, yeah, so you're, you're able to uh, walk around on the main deck. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you walk by uh, one set of stairs that goes up and there's, um, there is a like guard standing in front of it. Mm-hmm. Not anybody uh, with any weapons or anything, but uh, they're just uh, making sure that nobody goes up uh, to the second deck. Um, uh, you see, you see a whole slew of tables and this dance floor out out near the nose of the ship. Uh, you see Manette standing at one of the uh, pits. And he, he looks like he's uh, looking over diligently these tables. It hits you, it strikes you as weird because you shouldn't be able to see Minette so high up. And uh, as you get closer, you see they've brought out these black milk crates <laughs> for him to stand on top of uh, so that he can actually see the tables, uh, the top of the tables. And, They're uh, very nice looking milk crates. Yes, so. and and he looks very very, digni- very dignified. Milk <laughs> yeah, very crates. very dignified milk crates. And he looks he he's standing up there and he looks very like business like mm, I'm no <laughs> milk true. milk crates. They're, they're actual cow milk crates. You know, it's not. Like, so this is a fine <laughs> this is a fine boat establishment. Yeah, right, right, no, right. no no sheep milk or pig milk. Right, or, right. The no, none milk. of those lesser milks. <laughs> it's only the finest of milks. Yep. Um, uh, you see a little sign in common. Like unicorn mm-hmm. milk crates. <laughs> you you see a little sign <laughs> in common that says uh, uh, high roller section. Well, I was hoping that there'd be like some conspicuous non-guarded hallway or something that I could wander down, but there is there is one like as you're scanning through. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you see the sign, and then towards the other side of the ship, opposite from when you walked in, uh, there is another set of stairs, but it goes downward. I'll go down it. Okay. So as you're walking through the crowd, you see uh, this this tall orc in the crowd, and he's got his hair combed really nice, and it strikes you as like, man, that looks a lot like Kenny, and like if he would take a shower or something. But, Side note, um, I did spend 10 minutes before the performance uh-huh. prepping a unseen servant 
<laughs> okay. It's very important to what I do in the performance. Okay. So, all right. Fantastic. Well, you got this all so, planned out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> and uh, so you start you start to walk down these stairs, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you hear uh, you hear this this shout uh, go over the crowd. Um, uh, it says, "Come one, come all, come see the amazing Keo. His his tricks will astound you. They will flabbergast you. You will be put in awe." And uh, all the people they're talking and mingling and stuff like that. All their heads turn towards the front of the deck, uh, all away from you. I so, sort of chuckle as they talk. Keo up and just like <laughs> someone's doing it for him this All time. Right. Is, the, is the moon out? That's another question I have. <laughs> Not yet. Not Not yet. yet. Right. Will it, it, be it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's pretty clear skies right now. It's important. Okay. So <laughs> this thing guy. About everything I have. <laughs> As everyone turns, and the the profusely sweating Kidian from basically <laughs> seeing all this alcohol and not being able to drink it oh. <laughs> and seeing all the gambling taking place and not being able to gamble when everybody's heads turn you see him reach to the table where people are playing dice and you see his hands rest on the dice and you see his eye twitch <laughs> ever so slightly and his hand reaches back sweating even more <laughs> So, the show's about to start. Do you want to describe your your show? Keo strides into the room confidently. Any- up onto the stage, and yeah. then you walk to the center. Yeah, and... I'm sure there's no swagger in your step at all. <laughs> and I've been charged to defend him, so Sweat, Sweat Master Ken is following him. Every six seconds, a light goes out. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, not all the lights, just to take it to about half light level. Okay. And Are you I... finger gunning them away? <laughs> well, he's got the glass staff in one hand. Okay. But... <laughs> and then um, Kyo taps the glass staff twice on the floor, which is the sign to Jeeves, his um, <laughs> unseen servant, to pick him up. Okay. So, he, so to the audience, he appears to float into the air. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, Akio says in a high pitched squeaky voice, Let the magic begin! And uh, poof makes a um, puff of smoke. Everybody just starts oh clapping. God. This is this is probably the height of Kyo's life right now. <laughs> Everybody yeah. is enthralled in what you are doing. Yeah. And so um, Kyo uses Mage Hand to pick up a deck of cards. Okay. Maybe. Off of one of uh, Minette's uh, yeah, just tables. Off a table that's not being yep. not using it. Yep. He has a little bit of an iffy sense on your know, ownership. Okay. Yeah. But, um, so he takes the cards and he starts shuffling them, and he asks for somebody to come up from the audience. Okay. This young woman. He says, "Me, pick me." All right. I'm like, okay, I pick you. <laughs> and he beckons her over. Okay. And he goes. Pick a card, any card. Uh, she looks and looks and looks and then grabs a specific card. All right, and he puts the rest of the cards together, throws them off to the side. <laughs> Just this big plume of cards <laughs> off to the side. Yeah, yeah. and then he um, takes a, tears a scrap of cloth off his red cloak. Okay. And ties it around his eyes. Just like Bond. The cover. And he like, goes like this. He says, and he's like, make sure I can't see anything. <laughs> she punches you. <laughs> she, she strikes you. <laughs> it's not enough to do damage, but it's it's enough to prove that you couldn't see a fist come at your face. <laughs> Kyo goes, oh, I didn't say it hit me. <laughs> and so he, um, and he says, okay, show your card to the crowd. She, she shows the back of the card to the crowd. And says, bring your card card forward here and touch it to my finger. And she does. And I cast prestidigitation to mark the card. Oh, okay. Um, now I don't know if kobolds have slightly different sight than humanoids or not. It's trying to be subtle. Yeah, yeah. It, anyways. 
it's not something that should be noticed by the crowd. Yep. And he says, okay, toss the card. And she she tosses it. And then he um, you know, tears away the mask. He's like, and now for some tricks. And he pulls off his hat. And he reaches into his hat. And he pulls out Hootie. Da, da, da. Everybody's just clapping. And he shows him the hat. Puts Hootie in. Into the pocket dimension. Uh-huh. Pulls back the hat. Shows it to him. <laughs> and it's empty. Yeah, it's empty. Yep. And he looks throughout the crowd to find somebody who has a hat. Okay. Yeah. There's a there's a big dwarf sitting there at the high rollers table, like this big wide brim hat, and he's got this weird accent. Alright. Then Keo tells his unseen servant, whispers to him, says, carry me over to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you just go floating. Yeah, float over. Yep. Now I'm gonna start picking up the cards every six seconds using Mage Hand. Okay. When I get to the guy. Yeah, just something that would go unnoticed to most yeah. um, is when you're floating over to the edge of the stage, yeah. you drop down slightly okay. when you when you yeah. go to the yeah. on the other side of the stage. You you see off in the distance, uh, mm-hmm. Pow is sitting there and is like squinting at you. Like Pow, yeah. I'm sure Pow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows exactly. the. Well, she it's knows a magic show. Yeah, yeah, it's a magic show. Using real magic. Yep, yep. You know, I'm sure the everyday person in favor room doesn't see magic every day. So yep. So this should be good enough. So I go over to the dwarf and I ask him. I say, "Good sir, could I please see your hat?" May I use it? And I say, "Please show your hat to the crowd." And he he takes it off and just right. shows it. And then I take his hat. I okay. Stick my hand in his hat. I summon my familiar in his hat. I pull Hootie out. <laughs> and the guy, the guy, like pulls his hat back, and he looks inside, and he like starts trying to reach inside, and he can't reach all the way in. And then, like, and I take off my hat, and I place Hootie in my hat. <laughs> nice. And everybody no sleeves. No sleeves. <laughs> and um, so. And I continue to pick up till I have the full deck. You know, I don't know how long a show this is supposed to be, but I have some good tricks. Okay. And I, um, I ask for a box. Okay. Uh, somebody comes up with, like, a small wood box. Right. And then I ask for, does anyone have a sword? <laughs> Nobody has a sword. Guess it's okay. Um, uh, somebody from the from the crowd says, "You have a staff." It's not pointy. <laughs> I'm like, it, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. And I'm like, Kinian, could you be my assistant? Give it a round of applause for the lovely Kinian. <laughs> and I am like, <laughs> pale, <laughs> pale, <laughs> white. Oh my God. I'm like, have you ever seen a lovelier <laughs> assistant? <laughs> and it's like this. Pale green skinned orc standing up there, just sweating bullets. He, he looks almost like as he walks up, it might squish. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I, I whisper to Kinian when he gets up there, and I'm still picking up the um, I'm still picking up the yep the cards, the cards yes yep, and um I, I look for a drink. Okay. Um, yep. Right there on the table. Yeah. Actually, one of the attendants is walking around right. with a tray. Well, in between, in between the um, card pickup, you know, until I get the fifty-two, I grab one of the drinks off with Mage Hand, and yeah. when Kinian goes over there, I accidentally spill it on him. The drink? Yeah. And okay. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then I say, Abracadabra, and then I make the stain disappear. <laughs> All right. The sweat like oh, disappears. Sweat. Yeah. And within moments, just returns. <laughs> so, clean it. Cutscene. Okay. <laughs> I got more stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cutscene to uh, ten. <laughs> uh, so you're you're walking down these stairs and you're hearing these oohs and ahs, and uh, uh, up on the deck. When when you get to the bottom of the stairs, uh, there is. Uh, a curtain in front of you. To the right and left of you uh, are uh, bathrooms. Okay. Um, small, single-person bathrooms. The doors are, are uh, wide open um, and uh, nobody's in there. Uh, and then there's a curtain in front of you and you hear people sitting down and getting ready. Um, uh, just 
Not really talking, just preparing. If someone came up to me and was like, what are you doing? I was going to be like, I'm looking for the restroom. <laughs> but now I found the restroom. Well, I know where Kyo is now, but I still don't know what's going on with Bon. But I guess I'll go back up so that I can try to nab Kyo at the end of his performance. Okay. So when you get back up to the top of the stairs, uh, Keo's wrapping up his first set. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and explain your your last trick for this set. Oh, for this set. Yep. Okay. Well, I have two tricks left. Okay. So I get all the cards, mm-hmm. right? And then I ask Kenyon to hold the box, and I step in the box. And I whisper to Kenyon before I go in, I'm like. Okay, I'm going to have you dash the box on the floor, but tap it twice before you do it. When I throw the cards out, that's a signal for you to lift the box over your head and toss it. But I need you to tap the box twice before you throw it on the floor. Uh, uh, You're going to throw the cards, tap the box twice, and then throw throw it in the air? Throw it down and smash the box. Throw it it down. Okay. But tap it first. I need the signal. Okay. Right. And so I go through the cards, and I find the one that I marked. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I I look to where the try to figure out where the um, person is with the card. Mm-hmm. And then I, I say, okay. Let's I throw the box. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't know if it's an acrobatics okay. or whatever. I want to try to misty step because I'm supposed to. Appear next to the person. Oh, you just yeah, you you can miss these step. All right. uh, is there uh, enough time when I feel it moving? Because well, that, that was the trick. Is right, I throw right, it out. Right. He he smashes the box and I'm not there. But then I'm standing next to the person and I say, "Is this your card?" I got you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. he he missed the cue. So <laughs> what sort of save do I yes, need to make? Acrobatics to make sure you don't land flat. Okay. Where I don't smash into the person. Yeah. And miss these step. So, acrobatics! Dun dun dun! That's not so great. An eight. An eight? So, uh, you misty step and. uh, There's a thump. Yeah, just (laughs) thump. Like right at the at the foot of uh, of this person, but the box still explodes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now, is most of the crowd focusing on that? Yeah. Yep. And then I guess I'm flat at her feet. I'm like, is this your card? <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, well, yeah, it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then I have, um, I say real loudly, Jeeves. And I pull out my three, um, my three diamonds. Okay. And I use Mage Hand to swirl one around, and I have Jeeves with the other two. Okay. <laughs> and I, like, walk backwards out of the crowd. Nice. Very cool. And a puff of smoke. And disappear? No. Oh, and just puff of smoke. <laughs> puff of smoke, and I start relighting the... Okay. Relighting all the Everybody is just clapping along. They are having quite the time. So I used a third level spell for that misty step. I have been, I did remember the spells I cast last night. Nice. Time. Nice. I'm still on the stage. Yeah. In the spotlight. <laughs> you're, you're just standing there like... Uh, yeah, with a bunch of stuff, broken stuff. <laughs> approaching the level where I might faint. <laughs> <laughs> like staring kind of up at the ceiling, like... <sighs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, constitution. <laughs> Do I roll anything else? It's a 26. <laughs> dice. <laughs> I don't think it's weighted. The guy is proven. Oh. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you don't faint. Uh, you're just standing there. And uh, Keo walks off. Uh, and everybody kind of starts turning to go back to the gambling. Uh, and then some people are like, they're like looking back to see if you're still at the stage. And then they're looking back to the table. And they look back one more time and you're still standing there. And they're like, uh, is it done? <laughs> no response. <laughs> just like, oh, okay, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> and they go back to their gambling. Everything just kind of picks back up. Everybody starts talking. Uh, uh, you're hearing the general uh, conversation across this uh, deck is how amazing that mm -hmm. tiny dragon was. Gio, you can hear this. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're walking off, uh, trying to find mm -hmm. another a place to prep for, for the next show, mm -hmm. uh, you bump into Tin uh, coming mm -hmm. up uh, from the stairs going down below. Mm -hmm. What have you guys all been up to? I mean, nice job, by the way, but where is everyone else? Uh, I, I start telling a story about how they mistook me for a gnome, and um, I guess I'm a bard now. <laughs> <laughs> he just did a magic show. Yeah. And uh, uh, Come on, if you're a magician. Yeah. yeah. Um, he said, um, do you see, see Bond? No, that's... I, Thought you would know where Bon and Kenyon were. Mm -mm. I think Manette. not Kenyon. Yeah. Uh, bon and yeah, because you saw Kenyon. I heard. Oh wait, she saw someone who looks like him. Yeah, Sorry. someone Sorry. who looks like him, but yes. is mm -hmm. like all combed hair and everything, and it was from far away. So yeah. I don't yeah, think Kenyon's doing too well. He's having a crisis of some sort. And you like you look over, and he's still there on the stage, and you hear someone shout at him like, "Is it over yet?" Yeah. <laughs> um, he looks. How he far looks away from me is he? Uh, probably about forty or fifty feet. I move ten to twenty feet towards him. Okay. And then I float my mandolin over. Okay. Just the mandolin? Yeah. Okay. And it's like, it's floating right in front of him. <laughs> and Gideon's just kind of like, arms at his side, like... And I go, okay, uh, and I float it back to me. Uh, my only reaction is, oh my gosh, is that Gideon? <laughs> I'm more just talking to myself. And I say, I think he's having an existen existential crisis. <laughs> he doesn't know who he is anymore. I... <laughs> Uh, Pao comes over to you, and she says, uh, Well, Kyo, it was quite the show. People seem to like it. You may want to watch that unseen servant, though. He's not raising his hands when he when he steps off the stage. The keen eye will see that. <laughs> she says, uh, Where the hell's Kinian? And she looks over, and she's like, Oh, God. And uh, <laughs> she she walks over to the stage, and she leans into uh, close to Kinian. Uh, to whisper into his ear, she says, What the hell are you doing? Uh, gambling? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're on the job. Uh, and she says, uh, she says, Get back to your charge. I vouched for you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I step down off the stage, and uh, I'm, I'm basically seeing double at this point. <laughs> And uh, I see someone with a tray of drinks go past me, and I know I'm not supposed to be able to drink on the job, so I walk directly into it <laughs> oh my gosh. and try to catch some alcohol oh as I God. fall on top of this person. <laughs> I would like to an attempt to try to acrobatically yeah. gulp some hooch out of the air while falling. <laughs> Go for it. Oh my gosh. Good thing I specialize in my plus two acrobatics. Yes. Seven. Seven. <laughs> you get you get like a couple drops on your tongue. Just like enough enough to taste it, not enough to maybe sate the thirst. Some of the, the sweat on my brow uh -huh. clears a little, and I start looking a little bit more normal, but now my jaw is quivering. <laughs> Powell walks over to you, and she picks you up, and she uh, snaps uh, to clean everything up. Um, uh, she says, uh, Would you like to go down to row? I think, I think I need a drink. Just have a fucking drink! 
<laughs> and she like she grabs a drink from another server and like uh, grabs it and puts it in your hand. She's like, just don't get wasted. Uh, and the moment it touches my lips, it's like a wave of calm <laughs> washes over me. And you see like me take my hand and and kind of scrape it through my hair. And uh, the wrong direction. <laughs> the wrong direction. My hair kind of stands up for a second, and then I remember, and I go, oh, "Yes, ma'am." And then I, I comb it back the other direction. <laughs> She's uh, in a loud sigh. Yeah. Uh, the the dwarf with the big brim hat uh, looks over and he's like, "I get stage fright too." <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> He's like, don't you worry about it. Here, have one on me. And uh, uh, he he hands you a drink that's sitting in front of him. Another another drink. He says, uh, now you, you get on now. And, uh, and he turns back and he starts gambling. I don't even have time to determine what the alcohol was. <laughs> it was just gone. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, Manette, uh, all this is going on right near your pit. When people turn around and they start talking uh, about how fantastic this was, uh, you hear some people saying, you know, um, uh, you hear some people saying, man, Casper's really starting to pull out all the stops for these trips. You know, I, I started considering not coming anymore. I'm just kind of getting sick of all these these bards and stuff. And uh, uh, you hear a whistle go off just after Kinian has uh, uh, finished his second drink and started moving off. Uh, you hear this, uh, this ship whistle go off and the boat starts to, starts to move. Uh, you hear like oars in the water and they're starting to, uh, starting to paddle. And uh, it's got this rhythmic uh, noise to it. Uh, you you hear uh, some people uh, talking about Casper and about how how it seems kind of odd that he keeps uh, schmoozing up uh, the people of power. And these are people of power. They're uh, they're just kind of discussing about how uh, some of them feel like he's using them. A couple don't even care. They and they express that they don't care as long as he continues to wine and dine them like like uh, he does. Uh, I need you to give me a perception check, please. 18. 18. You see this human, one of the dealers. Uh, he's dealing out uh, cards, and he's finished like scraping what tokens the house had won uh, back and putting them into the slot. And uh, you see that four tokens are supposed to go in one of these slots. And when he takes his hand away, it only increased by three. When you see that, he starts to like lift his sleeve a little bit mm -hmm. on each side, just to kind of show that he's got nothing up his sleeves. And uh, you see the bottom part of a Zintarum uh, tattoo. And uh, you don't see that, that token appear, uh, the one that you would expect. Okay, I'm gonna wander over to him. Okay, I'm assuming he's standing rather tall yep, compared so you to me. Tug on his shirt. Yeah, and I uh, take his arm and squeeze it noticeably, not enough to actually hurt him. Okay, just be like the house gets what the house earns. And uh, he leans down and he says, "Of course it does." And he opens up the hand that you have mm -hmm. and uh, and the token drops out okay. uh, falling into one of your hands okay. on the token uh, has a uh, 50 printed on it over top of this yellow uh, goose this golden goose uh, he says uh, my apologies I I do not know what what came over me and um, of course uh, he goes back uh, he keeps dealing. Uh, one of the guys uh, at the table, uh, this dwarf, 
this big brim hat is uh, he's having quite the time. He uh, he's winning uh, a lot, uh, a lot, a lot, and uh, he starts uh, shelling out tips. Uh, he he flips a coin your way as a thank you for uh, keeping you know the pit moving smoothly and stuff like that. He says, uh, "You keep this pit running as good as you can, and uh, uh, I'll make sure to keep." Winning all your money, and uh, <laughs> he keeps going back, and he seems like he's winning a lot of money. It it is very surprising how much this guy is is winning. He flips you a token, and it's uh, fifty. That's a tip to you. Now, something that you you overhear between a couple of table tenants that are coming over to relieve some of the people in your pit. Mm -hmm. um, you you hear whispers from from these people as they're just kind of you know trading out and stuff like that. Uh, they say, uh, "Has the boss uh, has the boss come up with a, a new meeting place? Last time it was just way too close. Security, the the town guard they they found us a lot faster than than usual." And the the other guy says, uh, "No, not at all." I I haven't heard anything. The, I feel as though the master is uh, he's providing less for the society than than he used to. Seems he's you know spending a lot of time trying to schmooze these rich folk, and they just kind of eye over the over the tables, and uh, and they say uh, he says well. Uh, I left something for you back in your locker. Uh, and they they just kind of nod and uh, shake hands. The one the one trading in pulls his his sleeves up high, shows the crowd uh, nothing nothing in his hands. Uh, you know shows that there's nothing in his shoulders um, and starts going back to shuffling the decks and stuff like that. Uh, the other walks off and makes his way towards the back of the ship. Uh, and starts walking down these stairs. So the one that arrived was the one that said I left something for you? Yeah. Yep. Is there any way for me to flag down Kinian? Is he still around? Uh, he's not too far away from you. You can raise your hand. When you do, uh, Pal looks over at you. Uh, she, she walks over and uh, she says, uh, has, uh, has anybody traded in a lot, a lot of gold? Uh, this dwarf over here seems to be quite good at winning. I'm no expert at casino games. Uh, okay. But I don't, I don't suspect you're supposed to uh, earn quite this much if you're not the house. She walks over to, to this dwarf, and she taps him on the shoulder, and he turns around, and she says, uh, Excuse me, uh... Will you come with me, please? And he says, "What? No, not, not at all." And uh, <laughs> and and she says, uh, "No, I insist." And uh, says, "Nah, I'm not leaving this table." Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do it here then. And uh, she she starts doing a few gestures and says a few things, and she looks intently at him, and he says, uh, "What do you?" What are you trying to do here? And she says, I'm reading your thoughts. Now, have you been cheating tonight? He, uh, he starts to sweat noticeably. He says, well, no, no, not at all. Says, wrong answer, dwarf. And she does another gesture, and, uh, and he seems to, like, straighten his spine. And she says, take a hike. And he's he starts like looking around, and she says, "Off the ship," and the ship is now in the center of the river, and the dwarf gets up, push, uh, uh, pushes his chair away and stuff, uh, uh, jumps off the chair and uh, starts walking towards the edge. He climbs up onto the rail, and he just steps off. 
uh, as soon as he hits the water, he's, what in tarnation? And he's like, blah, 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 you know, at the same time, uh, uh, trying to tread water. And uh, and you see eventually he, he uh, gets a hold of himself and is able to start swimming like a wet rat mm. uh, towards shore. She looks at you and she says, I greatly appreciate what you have done for us tonight. Keen eyes, that is what saves us money. She hands you ten of the fifty pieces. And she says, uh, for how much this man was winning. This is but a small tip. Cash it in at the end of the night with me. I appreciate it. And she walks off. With this, Kinian has has noticed this this commotion and is looking towards you. And I take three drinks <laughs> off, the, <laughs> off the passing waitress. And uh, by the time it takes for her to pass me, they're already drank and put back on the tray. <laughs> so, Impressive. Is it getting to be time for Kyo's second show? It's getting close. It's getting close. So do you do you uh, do you like flag yeah, to I him? Flag Kinian down. Okay. Right. Uh, 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 you're here now too. <laughs> Uh, yep. Oh, oh God. Is there a problem? So much gambling. <laughs> I need help. <clears throat> I wish I knew better spells. <laughs> I don't know very many spells. <sighs> yeah. I can't, uh, I can't help you. <laughs> what, what, what do you need? There was an attendant who was acting a little shifty when he swapped in. Uh, his buddy apparently has a gift in his locker, and that seems a little odd. God, my belt's in my locker. And I am gone. He <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm All running right. You're pushing for, through the crowd for the lockers. Okay. Uh, Kinian pushes past uh, Keo and Tin. Um... Uh, and you start like bounding two stairs at a time down the steps. You get through the first curtain. The lockers are to your left and right. Left and right, excuse me. And uh, you turn left uh, and you see somebody uh, opening a locker and looks at you and is like, hey. Hey. <laughs> and uh, I kind of like full pause when I'm in the, when I'm looking at him. Yep. And uh, for like an uncomfortably long, like 30 seconds. <laughs> and he's doing the same thing, just like mouth agape, like, uh. And like my left foot slowly slides forward and I start moving and, uh, you know, just walk up to my locker and uh, keep looking at him out of the, the corner of my eye and open my locker to make sure my, my gear is still in there. And then close the door. He he's putting on some clothes, and he's like, "Are you all right, man? How do you do it? How do you how do you come here every day? It, itching, itching myself. Uh, all the dice, money." <laughs> he says, he "says Whoa, dude. Um, well, uh, I." I don't have that problem. Uh, <laughs> it seems like the wrong ship for you to have that problem. Uh, here, have this. And he, he pulls out like this uh, big bottle of uh, clear liquid. It looks, it, it's completely clear. It looks like water. And it's got like this bow on the top of it. And he says, uh, here dude, um, take a swig of this. Maybe it'll help calm your nerves. No delay. Just... Mm -hmm. bro, bro, bro. Just, like, do you bro. chug it? You're like... Bro, 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 bro. Half the bottle. <laughs> Constitution saving throw, please. Uh, uh, he's like, dude, that's my... That's my good... That's my birthday present, man. 17. 17. He says, you, you better be careful, man. That's some potent stuff. You feel, like, this dizziness wash over you. Uh, you feel pretty intoxicated. 
I uh, <laughs> you, you shut up, friend. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he he takes the bottle away from you. And he's like, he corks it and he goes, uh, are, you, are you all right? Mm, much better now. <laughs> he's, uh, all right. Um, hey. Like one eye is like completely shut. Yes. Yeah. Squinting at him. He says, don't, don't I know you? Uh, he kind of looks you over and he's like, Oh, you're that pirate guy. I know you. Mm, I what? know you. You're Kenyan. P- pirate? Yeah. Yeah, don't play coy with me, man. I know who you are. Uh, what are you doing here? I don't, I don't know any pirates. Ah, uh, come on, man. I know you. What are you doing here? I wanted to gamble. The only way I could get on the boat was as an employee. Oh, that's a tough break, dude. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, are you still doing that pirate thing, or what? Uh, <laughs> let, let, let me... Prop something, please. Let, let me... Let me take a look at your present again. He, he like, you can look, don't touch, man. It's, it was my birthday. I, I get, like, uncomfortably close to him. Okay, okay, you can have it. Okay, dude, just, your breath is awful. <laughs> <laughs> they wash my hair, man. Oh, I know them feels. Uh, so, uh, are you still doing that pirate thing or what? Yeah. <laughs> he says. He goes. Uh, well, uh, I'm kind of part of the society. Uh, pretty cool society. You might want to think about joining. We got a. It's called the Kraken Society. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of secretive or whatever. But uh, you know, I, I figure I can I can tell you about it because uh, you know you're you're notorious. You you like. You're the man, man. I, I don't know. It, anyways, it's right up your alley. I heard that there's some ships, and the society is looking for a captain for the ships, man. And uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to talk to to Lord Dryland. Oh. He's like, all right. I I gotta go. I'm I'm gonna go gamble. See ya, we, dude. We can gamble? Yeah, when when it's your break. When's my break? <laughs> I I don't know. When'd you start, man? Where's that woman? <laughs> Who do I work for? <laughs> Where am I? Where is class staff? <laughs> oh, God. I'm supposed to be watching someone. <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. You like look around mm. and the guy's not here anymore. Like he's he like he like sidestepped you while while you were having this epiphany like you need to be watching Keo. He like sidestepped you and like just walked up and he's like see ya dude and <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I go back to my locker and open it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pull down my like tuxedo pants. Okay. And put on my fire giant belt. Okay. And rip my pants as I pull it up <laughs> over my belt. <laughs> All right. So it looks like it looks like you're packing like you're hiding things underneath your pants, uh-huh. and they like they tear because they're not supposed to go that f- like they're not made for that girth. Uh huh. And uh, be like trying to wear skinny jeans with the <laughs> with the. WWE. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yep. And I look in the mirror. You yeah. look awesome. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. I set the drink down and spike my hair up <laughs> and stumble back out. <laughs> and now I'm going up the stairs. Okay. Hey everybody, uh, it's Alan, your DM. 
And uh, I wanted to say thank you from the cast and crew for listening to Roll With Advantage. We really appreciate it. If you feel like you want to support the podcast or um, uh, even want to get on the podcast in all sorts of different ways, go ahead and check us out at Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash roll with advantage. Uh, we've got all sorts of different support structures uh, that have got fun little things for each of the levels. If you can't support monetarily, comments and subscriptions go a very long ways. So if you could comment in iTunes or on YouTube, uh, that would help out the podcast so much. We also love to interact with our fans. Uh, if you use the hashtag roll with advantage on Twitter, or you can post in our subreddit, we we will be happy to uh, to engage with you guys. Um, it's super fun way to get to know some of us, and uh, you get to ask questions about your favorite characters um, or about the world, uh, what's going on in the background, stuff like that. Um, we also want to say a big thank you for Incompetech.com and BattleBards for letting us use their music uh, and sound effects. They do a fantastic job, and I highly suggest you guys go check them out. Um, just beautiful work from everybody there. For a full list of the pieces we use, uh, go ahead and check out the description, and uh, you'll find it there. So thanks for listening and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.